Good morning, dear students. So here we are with a very beautiful poem, meaningful poem, which has got uh, a possibility of uh, interpretations more than one. Heaven, if you are not here on earth, by the most celebrated poet, Kuvempu. Let us have a look at this. Yes, स्वर्ग यही नरक यहां इसके सिवा जाना कहा अपने यही दोनों जहां इसके सिवा जाना कहा वेर इज हेवन वेर इज हेल इट्स क्वाइट डिफिकल्ट टू डिफाइन इफ यू गो टू डॉक्टर फॉस्टर्स ए वेरी सेलिब्रेटेड प्ले बाय वन ऑफ द यूनिवर्सिटी बिट्स बाय नेम क्रिस्टोफर मालो वेर इन द कैरेक्टर from the help approaches dr fosters the most talented fellow and then dr fosters asks him where is hell and mephistopheles mephistopheles the agent of the devil exclaims like this why fosters this is the hell hell is not circumscribed by any physical boundary wherever there is evil there is hell it follows that hell is the creation of mind heaven is also the creation of mind man has got the habit of uh, thinking for something better it is called wish fulfillment man is never happy with whatever he has got the present that which is near to you always plagues you torments you pains you and psychologically we are bound to think about something very pleasant very perfect very beautiful and that beautiful that pleasure and, and that very well very good does not exist near you before you with you and the wishful thinking makes you locate it somewhere far away in the past or somewhere in the future so what we lack here we try to gain somewhere at some other place what we don't get here we wish to get at a place where perhaps we cannot reach so heaven is the creation of a mind when a man is tormented by the unsatisfying reality so what is heaven what is hell a fellow who is very much seeped into religion religious thinking has got a staunch faith a deep faith that heaven does exist a man nurtured on science he believes that heaven no longer exists because for him the very existence of god is not there he puts question mark over the existence of god when he doesn't believe in god that fellow does not believe in the existence of heaven which is nothing but incarnation of all that is good perfect and beautiful even such intellectuals we find among poets there was galib the most oft quoted phrase a line from his poem humko maloom hai jannat ki haqeeqat lekin dil ko khush rakhne ke liye galib ye khayal acha hai humko maloom hai jannat ki haqeeqat haqeeqat means fact or reality what heaven is where it is whether it is or it is not whether or not it is i know it very well it borders on the statement that i know heaven does not exist humko maloom hai i know very well jannat ki haqeeqat the realities of heaven humko maloom hai jannat ki haqeeqat lekin 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 to be happy dil ko khush rakhne ke liye aise ghalat fahmiyan khush fahmiyan the pleasant thinking is necessary because as i have told you the reality does not satisfy you the reality does not give you happiness the things the people who are near you with you fail to satisfy you then you try to find out something somebody perfect mr perfect miss perfect this is perfect something perfect and to that perfection we have given the name 
heaven. This is one kind of thinking. Heaven is nothing but realization of imaginary realization of something that is perfect. Another one, this is one small technique taking human beings to be the children. Why the human beings, even the grown up human beings, are they children? Yeah, they are. And sometimes, even if they are not, they are made to be children, made to behave like children. They are not allowed to grow beyond a certain limit. And naturally, man grows physically, but at a point, his physical growth goes on happening. But mental growth stops. Mentally, he stops growing. Many people grow up to the age of 18. Some people grow up to the age of 25, 40, and they stop. Their mind stops growing. Whatever ideas they have accumulated, whatever thinking they have acquired, that becomes final, and they don't refine it, they don't edit it, they don't change it. Whatever comes their way, they try to test the new thoughts, new beliefs, new revelations on the base of what they have acquired, what they have accumulated, and they start accepting or rejecting. They have got some measurement based on their experience of 25 years. If it coincides with that, if it agrees with that, they'll say, yes, this is true. If it doesn't, they will throw it up. But in fact, man should try to grow with the age. And there are some great people who grow beyond the age. Beyond the age too, they grow. A man of 25 may have the wisdom of 15. That is quite possible. But normally it is not found in among the human beings. They remain children or they are made to remain children because unless you are children psychologically, mentally, children in thinking, it is difficult to control you, control the human beings. If you want to control you, if you want to control anybody, this is the technique that first I have to do the impression that I am bigger than you, greater than you, and you are smaller. And then I make you a child for me, and I would like to control you. You don't know anything, I know. I have got all the knowledge, I am omniscient. His Mahatma, Sadhus, politicians, leaders, statesmen, all they pose. In fact, we can put question marks over their wisdom, their knowledge, but we are not allowed to. Our eyes are dazzled by their glory, other glory. And we come to believe that they are the perfect human beings. And such human beings, what they have done in order to control the com commonality, humanity. What they have done, they have devised this dual technique of heaven and hell, which is nothing but the incarnation of the common principle, simple principle, reward and punishment. If the child does not do the homework, we say, I will beat you. And there is another bait. We deliver the child with the bait. What is that? If you do it, you will get chocolates. You will get your favorite toy. Heaven is nothing more than the chocolate. And hell is nothing more than that meeting, if you behave well, if you follow the law, if you follow religion, before law there was religion, religion is nothing but a kind of law. Constitution, law, these are the later developments, refinements of what there used to be in the religion. Religion was nothing but a bundle of rules and regulations, you should behave like this, you should not behave like this. And the fear factor was there, that is punishment, and reward factor also worked. If you behave very well, if you earn a punya, then you will go to heaven, you will sit beside the Lord, you will become God. These are the things. We have not seen God. We are mesmerized, we are psychologically controlled like this. That what we have not seen. Normally we don't believe in common things. If somebody comes and tells, we say, come on, give me the proof. But we don't ask for the proof of the existence of God. And if we ask, there is another one, fatwa. You are against God. Do you insult God? This is called blasphemy. Speaking against God or religion is called blasphemy. And that is the greatest sin. It's not allowed in any religion, even Hindu religion. But Hindu religion is a little bit liberal than Islam and, and Christianity. Being a Hindu, you can abuse Ramakrishna and still you are a Hindu. You can say there is no God, but still you are a Hindu. But in Hindu religion also, you cannot speak against scriptures. Of course, these are all my own personal perceptions, but you may coincide, you may agree with me, at least on some point. 
लेकिन बेस ऑफ हेवन इज सच ए काइंड ऑफ टेक्निक दिस इज वन डेफिनेशन ऑफ हेवन अनदर इज ए प्लेस व्हिच इज कंप्लीटली आई मीन दैट लैक्स नथिंग दैट इज द क्रिएशन ऑफ द ह्यूमन माइंड व्हिच इज टॉर्मेंटेड अनसैटिस्फाइड बाय द रियलिटी इन रियलिटी इन रियल लाइफ ही हिज डिजायर्स आर अनफुलफिल्ड सो आई सीक fulfillment where in dreams in future and what is eternal future after death up to death is my present my past birth that is my past who has seen that and future is again heaven or hell so i seek for my fulfillment in the dreams in imagination in future somewhere else heaven jiska koi nahi hai duniya mein खुदा है यार यू कैन डिसाइड योर सेल्फ हाउ मेनी टाइम्स गॉड हैज कम टू हेल्प यू आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू से दैट गॉड इज रियल गॉड डज नॉट एग्जिस्ट और गॉड डज नॉट गॉड इज नॉट विथ यू यू नो व्हाट इज अ साइकोलॉजिकल बिल्ट अप ऑफ थॉट्स एंड व्हाट इज द रियलिटी इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू डिसाइड लेट इट बी so third definition will come uh, come to and that is very important for us heaven is the incarnation of something that is very beautiful in heaven we find gods goddesses and very rarely we come across any god who is not handsome no shiva no rama no krishna he is ugly have you seen an ugly rama not possible krishna why krishna's another name is sundar god's name is sundar that sundar ultimate beauty is god himself because ultimate beauty you can't find in reality so whatever is ultimate that is found in heaven whatever that, that cannot be found here can be there who has seen we don't know in this way something that is most beautiful is heaven if we think from this point of view we can start the poem gods are handsome goddesses are most beautiful apsaras are there they are the very realization of the concept called beauty there is one name tilottama that is she was the most beautiful woman apsara we can say heaven lacks in nothing it's a good place there is no cold nobody is hungry there is no poverty and all beauty around you beauty does not or we should not confine beauty to the looks only all that is good all that is satisfying all that is very good can be called beautiful so heaven is a place where beauty abounds beauty abounds that is it is there on a larger scale amir khusro the persian of the poet he spoke about kashmir he exclaimed dharti par agar kahin swarg hai to bas yahi hai yahi hai yahi hai if there is heaven anywhere on the surface of the earth it's here it's here it's here he exclaimed i have not been personally to kashmir not any other beautiful place this, like this malay nadu from where this poet comes there are very beautiful places in karnataka too you can visit those places and you will be wonder struck stunned by the beauty of the nature so that beauty of nature finds a celebration here if you go to kashmir if you go to mahabaleshwar if you go to such places as these that is the places in karnataka you won't have the feeling to come back you would like to end there only stand there and dissolve there like the sugar candy on your tongue slowly it dissolves that much beauty nature has so having looked at that kind of beauty the poet this is also an exclamation this is not a question 
heaven if you are not here on earth where else could you be where else could you be kuvempu the rashtra kavi the first among the recipients of the jnanapeet award the second to be called rashtra kavi after govind pai is greatest fellow who has written i mean who has rendered the mahakavya ramayana written by valmiki into kannada as the ramayana darshanam and who started the epoch the era of mahakavya in kannada he exclaims like this this is not a question where else could you be if you look at this line there is exclamation mark at the end heaven if you are not here on earth where else could you be what's the poet doing he is celebrating the beauty of the earth not just he but the greatest of the great poets have celebrated the beauty of nature we have wordsworth we have other poets romantic poets like keats and all those who have celebrated nature we have poets in marathi hindi everywhere some people find god in nature and some people find nature as god some people are not concerned with god but they are concerned with nature only wordsworth is called as the high priest of nature and he unfolds the beauty of nature before us and our poets are not also behind what is he saying if we look at earth the variegated scenes of the earth a different variety somewhere falls are there somewhere deserts are there somewhere tall trees are there somewhere the day is beautiful somewhere the night is beautiful somewhere moonlit night is beautiful somewhere the evening somewhere the morning somewhere the 24 hours are most beautiful so if such perfect beauty the beauty without any blemish blot or dot if you find on the earth what should you hark after what should you go after why should you seek for heaven where is heaven heaven is there in your mind it's the creation of human mind but here when you come to earth when you go around such places you are bound to think you are bound to exclaim you are bound to sing along with kuvempu that heaven if you are not here on earth where else could you be where else could you be if i come across a fellow who is perfection who is perfectly good i say there cannot be a person who is more perfect than you there cannot be better person than you you have studied the uh, oru manushan in the last class if you have not said go back to those pages the man who was rescued a man whose purse was stolen who was stripped naked and suddenly before he unbuttoned his trousers a fellow comes and helps him out and at that time while going he says i have not seen a better person than you that is he was the best one better than the best we can say maybe ungrammatical but many people bound to use it the sense is that ultimate best no other person can be as good as that fellow so where else god could be you came to me like a god so if earth is so beautiful why should i go after that imaginary place which i call heaven and i know jannat ki haqeeqat what it is so earth is heaven this is the statement this is the poem rest of the poem is nothing but explanation illustration and evidence of what we have said evidence he has advanced this point that earth itself is heaven how it is heaven and what makes it heaven that is the matter of the next three stanzas four line stanzas the poem is this much only these are the inspired lines actually one or two lines at the most one stanza in a poem are the inspired lines i do write poems 
and i could have written a uh, red po poems and i have read it that inspired lines are one or two at the most one stanza and remaining part is just making up making up the thing giving it a shape the soul of the poem can be found in only a few lines and the soul is here at the beginning this is the statement this is the capsule where he says heaven does not exist at any place other than earth heaven if you are not here on earth where else would you be then how how can earth be heaven if heaven if earth is heaven there should be god there should be a goddess there should be uh, what we can say angels elves apsara nymph the heaven should be populated by these things you know then to the poet has got the answer what is that if we ourselves cannot be gods then there can be no gods we are gods and what is again a god you might have seen the serials based on our scriptures series what is a god who is a god a popular perception we shall not go to the ultimate perfect definition of god god is one who is perfect again who is most handsome who is most powerful now you have you might have seen gods have got four hands eight hands 16 hands what does this prove hand is nothing but the symbol of power two hands i have got i am powerful if a fellow has got four hands then he is more powerful symbolic it is god is more powerful we have got two hands he has got four still powerful four on this side four on this side same goes with heads one head powerful two heads more powerful three heads still more powerful got more knowledge and that's how ravana he had 10 heads dashanana if you want to or if it is to describe a person who has got unlimited knowledge that fellow is described positively as dashanana you are a dashanana you have got a brain that is equal to 10 people's brain dashana that's how we cannot imagine that kind of fellow having 10 heads at a time so if you can think in one way ravana could think in 10 different ways at a time his mind was so sharp if you killed his one thought or one action his another another mind would come with the solution for it so gods are powerful in that way are not human beings like this have you not seen the advancement of the science what we have made of this earth what we have made of our life go back to the previous days pristine pristine we say pristine days what was there we were grazing cattle our aryans they came to india or if even if they happened to be here they used to graze their cattle they came gra grazing their cattle cows and buffaloes and bulls cows and bulls the christians what did what did they what did they do they grazed their sheep shepherds where did they live in the huts what did they eat how did they travel and what the advancement the science has made technology has made we have only the stories in mahabharata that the sanjaya could sit in the palace and could see witness the happening on the battlefield of uh, mahabharata kurukshetra but here in the mobile we can see everything in the tv television we can find everything whatever happens in delhi washington all great britain in any corner of the world why world in the space also is this not the achievement godly achievement what gods could do what gods were supposed to do in the mythological serials we are doing it we are doing it our minds have become super our hands have become powerful we have got big weapons we have seen weapons in the serials where arjuna wields so many banas arrows and we have got very destructive weapons in a moment they can turn the world into anything destroy the world it will become ash or on the other hand we have got positive technology also we have got the capacity to form the clouds and let it rain artificially why should we need those vayu astra parjanya astra and this fire astra 
we have got everything here. Haven't we developed? If we are not gods, gods are not there anywhere. He says, this is a statement pregnant with deep meaning. If we ourselves cannot be gods, then there can be no gods at all. Who else can be the god? What is it to be a god? First, we have to understand. Handsome people, don't we have? Scores of people are there. They are standing in a queue. They are begging for the role in the movie. And all of them are very handsome. Look around. You will find so many men and boys. Very handsome. One definition. Rich. So many people are rich. They don't know what to do with their currency notes. They fill their bags with currency notes and coins as they fill stones and what we call that uh, raddi, scrap. And they are clueless how to spend this. Their wives and children enjoy. They go to market and give it, throw the amount. And if I go to a shop, I start a bargain. 50 rupees, 50 rupees, 50 rupees, 50 rupees, 50 rupees, 50 I have saved 2 rupees. I will go from this shop to that, that shop. And I will burn my petrol, but I am happy. I have saved 2 rupees. There was a man whose name was Muftananji. And he had the habit of getting everything muft. Muft me anand manne wale Muftananji. Koi tabakho khaa raha hai, koi saamne jana haat phai lana. Tabakho le lena. Koi kuch kar raha hai, toh haan jana, wahan se le lena. Koi chai kar raha hai, toh saath me jana. Ek baar, gao mein aise ki factory khul gai. And he went there. Because on the first day, they were distributing ice for free. And wherever anything was free, this Muftananji would be the first man. He stood at the line for two hours. And there, when something is being distributed for free, what happens? People will start making uh, noise and that struggle will be there. Crowd. And in that crowd, in that struggle, he got his shirt, new shirt torn. But finally, he got the piece of ice and he came jubilant saying, hey, I have got ice free. And he forgot that his shirt was torn, but he has got ice for free. Hum petrol jalayenge, lekin guru pe ke liye, chaar dutaan ko menge. But there are very rich people who don't care for the money. Richness. To be rich is to be God again. Ishwar and Aishwarya. Aishwarya means luxury. Richness. Gani is the word in Urdu. Gani means very rich. That is the name of God. Abdul Gani. Srimanth is the name of, uh, again, God. Are we not rich? Richer? Richest? We are powerful. We are rich. We are handsome. And if it comes to being virtuous, human beings are more virtuous than the gods. Indra was the dirtiest God. Hankering after every beautiful woman and uh, molesting them. We know the story of Ahilya. There are the stories about the most virtuous Mahatmas. They never hurt even the ant. So in what respect do we lack this godliness? If we are not gods, where does God be? If we ourselves cannot be gods, then there can be no gods. Same applies to goddess. If we ourselves are an aren't heavenly nymphs. The nymphs are not elsewhere. Look at our women, look at our actresses. If you just click open, if you just, at the touch of the remote, if you open any channel, any song, any movie, you will find the sizzling beauties. Why should you go to heaven? Where is heaven? Who has seen? Who has seen Ramba, Urvashi, Menaka? These are all stories. But Ramba, Urvashi, Menaka, they abound here on earth. They are here. If we ourselves are in heavenly nymphs, the nymphs are not elsewhere. They are there. In kindliness. Can't we find our own mother to be very kind, our sister to be very kind, our colleagues to be very kind? There are some people, they are, they are kind beyond limit. They are ready to donate their shirt, only shirt on their body to you and shiver in the cold and they will save you from the cold and the shiver of the cold and they will die. Such people are there, such women are there, such men are there. When we can find all these things here on the earth, 
can't earth be heaven? If we ourselves can't be gods, then there can't be, there can be no gods. If we are not gods, nothing else and nobody else is God. Nowhere else you can find God. If we ourselves are in heavenly leaves. He comes to the women. Men's matter is over. Women. And we have spoken about it. I have explained. We have found this beauty. In beauty, in kindliness, in perfection, in delicacy. These are the qualities of a feminine personality. I don't say woman. Woman is different and a female is different. Woman is by birth a different biological structure. Different biological physical structure. She is born, a woman is born, but she is made a female. Feminine qualities. We have we have let us say this, this is all feminism. Feminists say that these qualities have been imposed by males on women. She should be delicate. She should be soft. She should be emotional. She should not be very strong and sturdy. That is the business of, that is the job of a male to fight and to be strong and all that. Whatever. Even in these feminine graces, do our women lack? How many women should we find around us? who are very beautiful, very delicate, very kindly, very emotional. Even at the death of a rat, they might cry. I mean, jokes apart, they are very kind. Somewhere some tragedy happens. People die. At the figures of the casualty, at the figures of the death dying due to Corona, the women at home get restless. Those people do not belong to them, yet their eyes turn moist. Women's at home. Is this not kindness, kindliness? Women, greatest women we have, who have fought for themselves, for their children, for their families, for their countries. Still we want goddesses to find elsewhere. Still we want gods. Are we not satisfied with this? So this is how he is advancing, like a seasoned lawyer, he is advancing his case. Evidence after evidence. Earth is heaven because we have gods here. Where there is God, there is heaven. Where there is heaven, there is God. It's not like that. Where there is God, there is heaven. Where there is teacher, there is classroom. A classroom is not a classroom without the teacher and without the students. Under the tree of Sarvindana, Tower could stand before his students and that became Shantiniketan school and then the university, Vishwabharati. In the same way, where there is God, where there is Goddess, where there are nymphs, that becomes heaven. If we ourselves cannot be gods, then there can be no gods. If we ourselves aren't heavenly nymphs, the nymphs are not elsewhere. So, it is proved in, your, in the language of your science, favorite sentence, hence it is proved that earth is heaven. Heaven is there on earth. Another aspect. Beauty. Which beauty now? Natural beauty. We just talked about it in brief while introducing this poem. Kashmir, Mahabharata, this Malayanara. Other so many places. You, you yourself can count on them. While this roaring stream rushes fast, the river stream. The power, the force, it also has got beauty. If you look at the river which is flowing very fast with a, with a great strength, the water rolling down, the waves thrown on the river banks, that is also magnificence. That's also a kind of beauty. While this roaring stream rushes fast, look at it. Rolling surf at the edge of waves. It's a feast to your eyes. What's this feast to your eyes? It's a thing to be watched. A simple fountain is there. A small stream of water is there. And it flows, making some beautiful sonorous sound. It has been often compared in literature. A small child with anklets or bell anklets. It has just learned to step, toddle. That toddler goes and that chan 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 sound. 
and that kind of sound is compared with or the flow of the river, the sound that is produced by the flow of the river that is compared with that kind of pleasant sound. Very attractive, very melodious. A stream of that size can give you happiness and joy. It has got its beauty, musicality, it is sonorous, it's sweet. And the big rivers that flow very fast with a great strength, they flow. Look at them, the thunderous sound they make, the water that is flowing with a great speed. And because of that speed, the foam is created near the waves. Look at that. And uh, the tender sunshine leaves on verdant gardens. Come to this side now. Now, this is winter season. Nothing is more satisfying and beautiful experience than basking in the warm sunlight of a winter morning. Get up early in the morning. Go to a garden, sit on the greenery, or just go up, be on your roof, and take the warm sunlight on your body. You don't feel like getting up from that place. My grandmother used to say such kind of warmth when, he, when she used to feel. She used to compare eating holgi and tuppa for those people. For us, these things are not the delicacies and the delicious things. There was a time when Holgi and Tuppa was the greatest of the feast. Like eating Holgi and Tuppa, she got that kind of satisfaction and good feeling. Jadun ki narm dhup kehte hai se. Anand mein led kar jadun ki narm dhup. Jada means this cold narm dhup mein. Is se bada experience or koi hoi nahi sakta. Gentle sun is this sun, warm sunlight of the winter morn. Warm sunlight of the winter morn. Jaron ki naram dhup. Ab dhup naram hoti hai, ya tikhi hoti hai, sakt hoti hai. This is a matter of experience and perception. The feel that you get from the soft things. Now, if you compare this kind of uh, heat from the sunlight, if you compare this heat to the heat of summer, that somewhere pinches you, scratches you, pushes you. Wo hard hota hai. That is hard and this is soft. Jarom ki naram dhu. Warm sunlight. That sunlight lying on the... Leaning means what? Now in this way, taking support of something and standing cross. Leaning. We are going to yeni. Yeni, that is ladder. How do we keep the ladder at home? It leans against the wall. Taking support of something as I am standing now. Leaning a little bit, cross sunlight. When the sun rises, his, slay, his rays do not directly fall perpendicular to earth. That happens when it is 12 o'clock. But early in the morning, they come like this, slanting. So that is called the tender sunshine, Naram Tender means delicate, actually. The tender sunshine leans on verdant gardens, green gardens. It's a sight to look at. As I have said, it's a feast to the eyes, the greenery. If you look at the very green things, green places to arise. That's why the Islam has chosen green as its symbol. In the deserts, there is nothing more pleasant than the greenery. Everywhere there is heat, scorching heat. And if you suddenly come across something very green, your heart is, heart is filled with joy. Green is a sign of life. And so Islam, which is born in the deserts, in those Arabian countries, that was nothing more pleasant than green color was the most pleasant thing for them. And they chose it as their the color. It's the beautiful color. It is called as one of the cold colors. Red and yellow, these are two hot colors. And blue is the only cold color. And from the combination of yellow and blue, we make green. If you look at something green, you get a kind of feeling. Some cold feeling. If you look at red, burning, heat starts. Let it be. So, verdant, verdant means green. Verdant garden. V-E-R-D-A-N-T. V-E-R-D. 
ant this ant v e r d n ant if you combine it becomes verdant verdant means green verdant gardens that yellow which soft early morning sun is throwing this sunlight if you look at it if you experience to take that sunlight on your body what an experience the tender sunshine leans on verdant gardens and then the gentle sun make this earth heaven how does this earth become heaven how does this earth become heaven by virtue of the fast flowing stream the strong vociferous powerful stream the rivers there are many powerful rivers in india if you just happen to step into that kind of stream or flow you will be washed away that strength is the magnif uh, that strength is the representation embodiment of the godly strength god is all powerful omnipotent he is called sarva shaktiman so that shakti is represented here on earth through the flow of the rivers this makes earth heaven the opposite this is now hard and strong and bit violent another one very soft thing and soothing the winter sun falling on the green gardens a sight to look at a beauty to cherish in the crevices of your heart in the crevices of your brain mind the tender sunshine leans on verdant gardens and then the gentle sun and the sun himself the gentle sun the sun can be gentle or cruel or civilized uncivilized gentle means soft here delicate soft we feel him to be like that early morning sunlight is the keep it soothing so if you start looking around you so many things are there which are very much beautiful very much soothing they please you they make you happy isn't it so when such things are there here on earth purish man what are you looking for what are you searching for when the heaven is just before you around you you are inside the heaven the earth itself is heaven and what's the proof these are the proofs these are the evidences and then the poet comes to the rural side to the fields and farms in the splendor of harvest and of moonlight heaven lies all over in the splendor of harvest and of moonlight moonlit night and the standing crops in the field moonlit light moonlit night is celebrated in so many poems many poems it's the most beautiful thing moonlight when it falls on earth at night particularly on the full moon night it turns everything into silver everything into silver the tree is made up of silver as if the hill looks to be a hill of silver small things lying here and there everything turns to silver everything is so beautiful silver lying everywhere the stream of water that looks to be the flow of liquid silver and now in the fields and the on the farms what do you find the crop that has come up it's very rare experience usually what happens to people tend to sleep at night but we must learn to we must learn to get up at night of course if you wander on the road the police will come and arrest you because you are not allowed to wander at the dead of night after 12 or around 12 if you do wander you must have some proof and i am coming from so and so place or i am coming from a movie or i have got certain work you must be able to prove you must be able to give the reason of you were loitering on the road at that time because the decoys and the thieves are supposed to wander at that time but if you do even on the empty roads if you do wander it's so satisfying but when you wander in the fields and the forests and on the hills in the valley at night moonlit night 
What a rewarding experience it is. It's a very beautiful experience. So those fields, those crops, everything that is around, that gives extreme joy, extreme happiness. <coughs> in, this, in this way, these things make this earth heaven. When human beings are there, man has got, woman has got, as he has called it, nymph. The fast flowing, strong rivers, the gentle sun, the tender sunlight leaning on the verdant gardens, the splendor of the harvest and of moonlight. If you look at all these things, these things make earth a heaven. These things have got the power to transform the earthly into heavenly, the earth into heaven. And then we revert back to the first two lines. Heaven, if you are not heaven, if you are not here on earth, where else could you be? But you know, all these things we see, we forget, we see, but we don't see. We observe, but we do not observe. Our eyes are open, yet they are closed to such beautiful things. Khushya hamari charo taraf hai. Beauty is everywhere. We are surrounded by beauty, but we are trained by nature, by habit, by culture, by our own thinking to spot the black dot on the white paper, to get skeptical, to be unhappy, to pinpoint the unhappy moment in our life. We don't learn to look at a heap of a heap of things which are joyful. But we can't see it. Beauty is everywhere, in every direction it is there. But we can't see it. And this has to be shown to you. You must be made to understand these things. Someone must be there who should give you the vision. Like Krishna gave vision to Arjuna to see the God. Someone has got that power. Someone is there among the humans who can see the things very clearly, who can see the beauty, who can see the joy, happiness, who can see the khushi. And he will see it. He will bathe in it. He will absorb everything. He will enjoy everything. Not only that, it will ooze out of him. He will start emitting it like the sun. As the sun emits light, this poet will start emitting that happiness, that joy, that experience, that vision. He shows you what it is. What a heaven, uh, what, 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 what heaven is, where heaven is, what is happiness and what is joy. These things are shown to you. Or need to be, we human beings, we have got eyes, yet we do not see. We have got mind, yet we do not think. We have got a heart, yet we do not feel. Dil ko dharakna sikhane, dil ko dharakna sikhane wala koi hai. Wo kaun hai, kya sikhata hai. In the first few minutes, we will see in our tomorrow's class. And without that, our poem will not be complete. Thank you so much for today's class. See you again. Okay.